Don't get me wrong, I love the idea of running. Get out there, put some music in your ears, clear your head, all the stresses of the day go away. I love it, but the problem is, is after about 30 seconds, my shins are on fire. Now I think that's one of three things. Either I don't run enough, which I don't, and I just need to keep going and, and my shins will get used to it. Number two, I need better shoes, because I land on my heel, and if I had better shoes, like better cushioning here, maybe that would help. I've tried to land on like the, the pad of my foot. It just doesn't make a difference. My shins still hurt, knees still hurt. Or number three, I'm just not meant to run. I'm just not meant to run. I think, I think that it's my consistency. I think if I do it every single day, my shins will get used to it. Comment in the section below if you had that problem and fixed that problem. I'd love to know. I'll tell you one thing, it is a beautiful, beautiful morning. The rain stopped, which is really nice. I don't mind the rain though. The rain's beautiful. It gives everything a fresh scent. So today, oh, today is my first tour this season. Yes, I'm nervous. I actually went to a coffee shop this morning and like looked up some of the numbers that I've forgotten over the winter. So it'll be exciting. See that lady right there? She's picking up plastic and garbage off of the beach. That is amazing. So it's my first tour back. We've got two double deckers here and I'm at the Clipper Terminal. So the same spot that I was at last time doing baggage. Well, now I'm driving bus. So we are going to be doing that today. I'm nervous, but I'm also really excited to give, uh, give the first tour, kind of get it out of the way and then I'll, I'll be really comfortable the rest of the season. Get it out of the way early, you know? Do something you fear early so then you don't constantly thinking about it. If you look to your right hand side, you're going to see the Empress Hotel, the beautiful Empress Hotel. This hotel is actually over a hundred years old. Fantan Alley. Fantan Alley is the narrowest commercial alleyway in all of Canada. It's three feet, three inches wide. So if you look to your right hand side, you will see Fantan Alley. All right, I just finished my tour and it was... It was good, it was good. I'm really hard on myself. It was good. I just forgot like a couple things, but it was nice to like finally get it done and now I feel totally comfortable. Not thinking about your tour for six months and the information that you give, you know, your, things are gonna kind of disappear from your brain. It's nice to kind of drive the route to remember, oh yeah, I said this, and, and a lot of things just like flow back in your mind. It's, it's so weird, like, it's just like riding a bike, it's just like riding a bike. I absolutely love driving double-deckers. The only thing with driving double-deckers is that it's like fun for people up top, but when you're up top, I can't hear you. So say you're like sitting here and you're listening to my tour, and I drive past something and I talk about something and you go, oh, or I say a joke and you laugh. The problem with being up here is that I can't hear you. So I don't know what to spend more time on. Say I tell a joke and you laugh, then I would you know, elaborate on that joke. But you can't hear anything from down here. So my strategy when I drive double deckers, you can hear the people back here, but you can't hear people up here. My strategy, if everyone's sitting up top, I just pretend they're laughing at everything and they're interested in everything. I'm basically telling myself the tour with as much enthusiasm as I probably possibly can. Um, so that's the one thing about driving the double deckers. When you're driving just a normal coach bus like I was last time, you can hear the response. So if you say something that 
people aren't interested in, you can hear that. If you say something you people are interested in, you can hear that so you can elaborate and change your tour around. Whereas here, you're kind of like, just down in your own little, own little space, blabbing on on the microphone. Okay, so just bear with me. I know it makes no sense because I was just in a bus and now I'm out front of Best Buy. I have to go get a camera and then I'll explain. <laughs> How are you? Good. Oh, what a pleasant surprise. You want to be in my vlog? Okay. Okay. Hi, everybody. This Hi. is Aaron. He's my favorite person in the whole world. I totally uh, forgot you worked here, by the way. Oh, I need, fun fact. I need to buy a camera. You need to buy a camera? I need to buy a point and shoot camera. Is yours not good enough? It's too big. I think I'm gonna get this one. Okay, so let me tell you what happened. So I just bought a camera, and I'm gonna tell you why I just bought a camera. But first, what happened at work was I was filming away and then my battery died, and I was like, oh, it's fine, I brought some charging equipment. Well, I couldn't find an outlet in that entire bus, a DC outlet at all. And so basically, I just stopped filming because all of my batteries were dead. Um, and so that's what happened. The reason I bought a new camera was because this camera is massive and brings a lot of attention and it's really hard to set up in the bus. And so I thought I would buy a smaller camera, just a point and shoot camera, so I could actually set it up in the bus and have a couple different angles. I also have a GoPro. So let's hop in my RV and let's check out this new point and shoot. SX620HS. I honestly did no research with this camera. Um, I can return it in 14 days, so I'm probably gonna re do research while I use it, and then if it doesn't work for me, then I'll return it. But yeah, let's check this thing out. I'm really excited. I haven't bought camera gear for a very, very long time. Also, as you can see, I need a new tripod. This thing has lost its strength. <laughs> Here, one second, let me get it. Come on. All right, that, that'll do, that'll do. All right, so battery charger, little battery, aw. Look at, this. look at this little battery. This tiny little battery compared to the, the DLSR battery. And, ooh, fancy. All right, that's what it looks like right there. I wish that it had a screen that you could pull out, but at the same time, I mean, if I'm vlogging like this, it's pretty much on my face, or if I'm driving and I secure it kind of to the to my window looking outside to give a good time lapse of me driving, um, I mean, then I'm looking at it, it's, it, you can't really go wrong with it. So uh, let's charge the battery up and uh, and see kind of the quality. I'm. Not so much worried about the image quality, I'm worried about the uh, the audio. See how the audio is. So we're gonna compare this big DLSR and this small one. And what's really nice about having this as well is that I can like film right now and show you like my setup, you know? I can show you just a different aspect. I like having two cameras. There, there it is, you can barely even see it. Oh my goodness. All right, so we're gonna test this one first. My big DLSR, I've got the big Rode mic on it. It's awesome, I love it. You can probably hear me crystal clear. I love the mic, I love the camera, I love the image. Now, let's check out this little Canon DLSR. Uh, it doesn't have a Rode mic on it, just a, a built-in microphone. I think it's 180p. Don't know much about cameras, 30 frames per second kind of thing. And uh, I'm going to check out, um, well, in post to see how it all works. We'll see what this one does. The one thing with this is that, like I said, you can't have the flip up screen. It's all on the back there. So if I'm vlogging like this, I don't really know where I am in the, uh, in the, in the picture. But with this camera, I have this, this, this is actually kind of, this is kind of nice because I can show you now, but I have this thing that sticks out. And so you'll notice I'll be looking at you guys and then I'll kind of check, just look to the right a little bit. And that's just me checking, you know, where things are in the, uh, in the in the screen so I it's pretty good it's a pretty good camera um, I'm surprised by the audio the audio is pretty good um, the image was a little bit faded that might be me that was just on auto right out of the package kind of thing so I can probably tweak that a little bit but I'll tell you one thing you can definitely see the difference between something like this versus a big DLSR and the reason that I bought this I bought it actually a long time ago I didn't I didn't buy it when I first started vlogging I tried a YouTube channel a long time ago, and I bought this basically because I watched one of Casey Neistat's video, videos, and he had this exact setup, and so that's what I bought. 
but you can definitely, it's neat because I've never really understood or known the difference and to see it right here was pretty cool. You guys saw the difference as well. But yeah, 300 bucks, awesome camera. I'm gonna try this out for a little bit. If it doesn't work, um, um, then I'll just get another one. I'm gonna do some research as well. I'm also really excited uh, just to have something smaller because this, this brings a lot of attention when you're walking in stores with it. And what I've found out is when I walk in with this big DLSR, um, people are either, you know, really friendly. Oh, what are you doing? And then, oh, I'm just on YouTube and they're fine with it. Or I do get this quite a bit. Well, what do you mean you're on YouTube? What are you filming? What is this about? You know what I mean? Like they're suspicious. Well, I want your, I want your YouTube channel to make sure you're not putting anything bad on. I understand that. Um, but at the same time, everyone has cell phones with video recording devices. So it's not like they're going up to every single person being like, Hey, did you take any pictures in here? Any video in here? Let me check your cell phone. Whereas when you walk in with this thing, people notice you, but this, I can just put in my pocket, do a little filming at the back of the store or whatever. And it is, it is what it is. Nobody's going to really, you know, I mean, this doesn't look as bad as, as holding, holding this massive thing. Right. So I'm excited to have this very excited to have this. Um, I think I'm gonna wrap the vlog up here, guys. There's a Starbucks. Uh, you probably can't see it. It's just over there. So I'm going to go upload the video that I made today. And, um, um, and yeah, that's, uh, that's the end of the vlog. Um, I am going to, however, open up a little bit of a Q and A. So if you guys have some questions about the RV lifestyle or about the, the new stuff, the tour bus stuff and my job and all of that, throw some, uh, some, some questions in the comment section and I will do a Q and A soon. It's about time. It's about time. There's lots of questions that I've kind of went over in the comment section. So yeah, throw them down there and I will answer all of your questions. I hope. I hope that you're living the dream today. Uh, if you're not, do me a favor and start living your dream. I hope that you have a wonderful night, a wonderful evening, and I will see you in my next vlog. Take care, my friends, and bye-bye.